OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. I actually did a poll in my community tab. 55% of you are using OBS Studio, 45% Streamlabs OBS. But I'm certain that many people out of the two groups are using the wrong software for them. So the goal of this video is giving you a good representation of what the two programs can offer so you can make an informed choice. This video is sponsored by Owned Pro. It's a plugin for OBS Studio that gives you a big library of graphic packs. Five of them are free at all times and can be installed in one click. If you want more options, you can subscribe for less than $10 a month to get access to all graphic packs, which is a lot to say the least. Besides that, they also have a chatbot, copyright free music and a bunch of other stuff. They recently upgraded the plugin and there's a 50% sale going on, so right now is a great time to get in. The link to the tool will be in my description, you can just install it for free to check it out and then decide if you wanna buy it later. Again, the link will be in my description. OBS Studio is an open source program, which means that I could take the source code of it, then add a bunch of features to it, and then launch that as my own software. And that's exactly what Streamlabs did. They took basic OBS Studio, they made it pretty, and then they added a bunch of extra features to it, which made it easier to set up your stream within the program. For example, adding alerts to the program, adding labels, adding a donation goal, everything like that could be added within the software. Basically, they made the creation of a stream much easier. Now this all sounds really good and it makes it feel like Streamlabs OBS is the best way to go. It's the upgraded program, it has a bunch of features, but there is definitely more to it than that and Streamlabs OBS has a bunch of downsides that might just as well make you choose OBS Studio instead. One big example of such a downside is that because Streamlabs OBS is a fork of OBS Studio, it means that when the guys from OBS launch an update, the guys at Streamlabs need to take that update and then implement it in their adjusted software and make sure that nothing breaks and that process usually takes a lot of time. OBS Studio also gives you more freedom and a great example of this is that you can move all these panels and rearrange everything or you can even undock them and then use them separately from your OBS program. This gives you amazing freedom and in Streamlabs OBS this isn't possible. They have a layout editor but this has a few fixed layouts, you can move around things like that but you can't rescale and resize everything exactly like you want and you can definitely not undock anything and this creative freedom in OBS and kind of being locked into how they designed it with Streamlabs OBS is a common theme when comparing both programs. They kind of feel like Apple versus Android, it's not exactly like that, it's a bad comparison to be honest, but it just feels like that. Apple is great, Apple is easy to use, but you're kind of locked down in their ecosystem and you're locked down to use the phone or in the this case Streamlabs OBS the way they intended it, whereas in OBS Studio or Android you can install what you want, you can change what you want. Now the next big thing we need to talk about is overlay elements like labels, alerts, all that stuff, because in Streamlabs OBS all of that is built in. When you click on the plus icon on the left you have the basic sources, which we also have in OBS Studio once we click on the plus icon, but then on the right side in Streamlabs OBS we have a bunch of widgets which we don't have in OBS Studio. Studio. Things like a donation goal, alerts, there are a bunch of things you can add with Streamlabs, things that are important for your stream but which aren't available in OBS Studio. And for that reason when using OBS Studio, you need to look for another service that can provide you with all those things. Now the most well known one is OBS Studio plus Stream Elements. They have an overlay editor and there you can add everything that's not available in OBS Studio. Again, things like a donation goal, labels, alerts, everything you can imagine that you want to add to your stream, you can do it with stream elements and then once you've set up your scene here, you just copy the link and then you add that as a browser source in OBS Studio and then you have everything but with Streamlabs it comes built into the program. And again this is a big reason why people go for Streamlabs OBS instead of OBS Studio. Everything is available within the program, you can click a few buttons and you're ready to go online. Now there are two important things to mention here. The first thing is that for beginners who don't want to install extra plugins in OBS Studio, people who just want to set up their stream and go online, those people might be very drawn to Streamlabs OBS because it's so easy. But then we have the second one which I already mentioned before and that's that Streamlabs OBS is harder to run 
on your PC. And in many of the cases, the people who are getting into streaming, the people who want to try it, are the ones with the slowest computer. Now, this obviously is a generalization, but in many cases, beginner streamers go to Streamlabs OBS because it looks good and because it's easy to set up. But then once they start streaming, they see that their PC can't really handle the stream. And then the thing you read everywhere online, try OBS Studio, it will probably go better. It also makes a lot of sense since Streamlabs OBS is OBS Studio plus a bunch of features that weigh down the program that make it slower to run on your PC. But I want to make sure that I'm giving the right advice, so I'm gonna test it. Guys, I just finished some tests. The difference in CPU usage is so much bigger than expected. Here I can track Streamlabs OBS and see the CPU usage, but you gotta see what happens. So I'm gonna go live here. Okay, let's click on confirm and now let's launch Overwatch. So I'm gonna turn around here. Now look at the CPU usage. Usually it sits at around 60%. Sometimes it peaks at 70 and don't get me wrong, 60% is okay since I'm using CPU encoding for this test. However, it is not okay if you see that my previous test with OBS Studio resulted in 27%. I also did a test with NVENC encoding instead of Software X264 and the result was 1.2% for OBS Studio and 4% for Streamlabs OBS. No matter which test I ran, Streamlabs OBS used at least double of the power of OBS Studio for exactly the same settings. Now while I was blown away by the difference of the two, it's still important to note that I was using Software X264 encoding which is CPU encoding. As you saw in the test results, when I was using NVENC encoding, so using my GPU, the difference was a few percentages since there's not a lot of CPU usage. If you are using Software X264 encoding, so if you don't have a graphics card, in which case your PC will probably not be that strong, it's obviously very beneficial to use OBS Studio instead of Streamlabs OBS. However, if your CPU is strong enough or you have an Nvidia graphics card, then you don't really need to worry about this problem. And at the start of the video, it seemed like Streamlabs OBS was the way to go because of all the options you get with it. In the program and then right now it seems like OBS Studio is the way to go but this is just how it is. Both of these programs have pros and cons and they both serve a specific audience. The important thing for you is to research which of these programs offers the features that you are looking for. A very important feature of OBS Studio that you definitely cannot overlook are the plugins. This is software that you download and then install in the OBS folder which gives extra functionality to the program and using plugins can also fill the gap between Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio because there are some things that Streamlabs can do which OBS Studio can't but installing plugins can easily fix that. An example of this is the virtual webcam you can make of Streamlabs OBS. Basically what this is is using the output of Streamlabs OBS as a virtual webcam to use in another program and OBS can't do that but you can simply install a plugin that adds that functionality to OBS Studio and from there the possibilities are endless. Now once you start doing things like that it's not basic anymore it's a bit advanced but that's the point of using obs studio you can do everything streamlabs obs can do with a bit more effort but from there on when you grow as a streamer and you learn more things then you can start playing around with the software installing a few plugins and really making your stream unique to yourself now i could keep talking about the difference between the two programs and about specific functionalities but let me give you a broad overview of which software you probably want to pick. It's pretty simple to be honest. After running a few tests today and really looking at the difference between the two, there's only a few scenarios in which you want to choose Streamlabs OBS. Now if you don't have a strong processor or an Nvidia graphics card, then Streamlabs OBS is probably not gonna work for you either way. Now if your PC can run Streamlabs OBS, then in which scenario do you want to choose it? Well in my opinion only in one. If you want one program which you can use to set up your whole stream, you don't care about extra extra functionality, your PC is strong enough to run Streamlabs OBS and you just want to add your game, add a few labels, add some alerts and then go live and don't think about it anymore, then Streamlabs OBS can definitely be a good solution. So yeah, when do you want to choose OBS Studio? Well, in all the other scenarios. If your PC can't handle Streamlabs OBS, if you want to use the most efficient program, if you want to use the standard program, if you're in this for the long run and you want to evolve as a streamer, maybe discover some new 
tools or some new websites to add fun things to your stream, you want to use OBS Studio. Because here's the thing, and this will wrap everything together. The website we used, Stream Elements, to add overlays to OBS Studio. You could just as well add some labels and some alerts here, then copy the link and add that link in Streamlabs OBS. And you can do this with most things. If it's not a plugin that you need to install in OBS Studio, if it's an external website where you can create something and then copy a link and add it to your streaming software, you can do it in Streamlabs OBS as well in OBS Studio. But if you're gonna be using external websites and install some new functionality to your stream, then I don't see any reason for using Streamlabs OBS for that. The only reason to choose Streamlabs is if you want complete simplicity, if you want to install the program, add a few things and be done with it. In that case, I can understand using Streamlabs OBS. But if you're gonna dive into some extra stuff and use websites, in that case you can just as well use OBS Studio since it's much easier for your PC to run and it has a much higher potential. If you like this type of stuff, definitely follow me on Instagram or on Twitter. I've been posting about this for the last few days. Like this video if you want to help me out because it helps a lot in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel to see more. And besides that, thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day.